Good afternoon, welcome to our homestead. As homesteaders, we need to save and invest just like everybody else. However, the things that we save and invest in need to be different than everybody else. Let's talk about it. All of us know that there is a lot of financial turmoil going on and that is not going to let up no matter who is elected in the administration. We just saw a massive omnibus bill try to get pushed through that just funded absolutely ridiculous things the American people don't want and don't need. And things like that will continue to be passed and create more financial turmoil for the American people and the world. So I want you to think about investing in unconventional things. But before I talk about that, I wanna talk about a few specific banking and finance issues that have come up in recent years that I need all of you to pay attention to. And the first of those things is called a bank bail-in, and this affects depositors who have their money in a bank that is failing. We know that there were a ton of bank failures in 2023 and early 2024, and those are not going to stop. And what a bail-in is, is if you have your money in a bank that is failing, then that bank can take a portion of your money to help bail themselves out. So if you have all of your retirement savings in a savings account or a checking account at a bank that is failing, anything above $250,000, they can take. So it's a very good idea for you if you have that much money in savings to actually go below that $250,000 threshold and get multiple different bank accounts. Now, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. This is what I've heard people are doing and might have friends who are doing the same thing. Please don't get stuck with one bank that can fail. Diversify yourselves in different banks. And be aware too, if you have a decent amount of money in a bank that has failed and you need to get that FDIC insurance, that's gonna take a long period of time. So in that period of time, you're bills are not being paid because you're waiting for that government guaranteed money to come back to you. And someday that's not going to be there either. Okay. The second thing I need you to look out for and pay attention to are FinTech companies. That's financial technology companies. These companies have the ability to move your money around. I'm going to simplify this and they have relationships with banks. However, they are not banks. Probably the most famous one is PayPal. If you have a lot of money in your PayPal account, that is not covered by FDIC insurance. Last year, a company called Synapse failed. And I think it was between 10,000 and 100,000 people, the numbers are all over the place to be honest with you, lost all of their savings within that financial tech company. Now that tech company was attached to a bank I think it was Evolve Bank out of Tennessee. However, since the customers did not have that money stored at Evolve Bank, it was only stored at FinTech, they lost that money. It was not FDIC insured because it wasn't attached to the bank. Now there's a lot of lawsuits right now going on with this, but people are out money, right? So if you need money, right now to pay your bills and you had it in one of these companies, then you have a serious problem. Like I said, the most famous is PayPal, but it also covers Cash App and Chime, if you've heard of those. So if you have PayPal, pay attention to your PayPal account because there is a bank that PayPal uses that's attached to it. It's called Synchrony Bank. That is an actual registered bank. And the nice thing is that they have a really high interest rate on their savings account. So if you push your money out of your PayPal and over to that bank, then it is insured and protected. Of course, protected as much as our government can protect it, right? Additionally, on the technology side, you have to be careful because there have been massive banks that have technology failures. Like Chase was out, I think it was six or eight months ago, I can't remember when. If you know the Economic Ninjas channel, he had his accounts frozen because of a technology issue. He needed to take money out for a financial transaction, a business transaction, and he couldn't do it for several days. This locked up thousands of people's accounts. And not two days ago, HSBC Bank, another very large bank, had an app fail. 
So their customers could not move money around, could not pay bills, and their financial technology just crashed. We all need to be aware of that and prepare for that. So what I'm telling you is diversify, 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 okay? Have three or four bank accounts, fine. Have a financial tech company like PayPal with a little bit in there that you can move really quick, fine. But also have some physical stores of wealth as well. If you wanna do silver and gold, cool, do that. But make sure you get the physical silver or gold and you're not just buying silver or gold certificates, which is a promise to pay you in gold, which if things fail, it's not there. So like you saw in the thumbnail, I want you to invest in other physical stores of wealth as well. This is valuable. It is valuable to your family and your health, obviously, and it will last for many years. Now, I'm certainly not saying put all your money in this. When you're living on a homestead or trying to be a little bit more self-sufficient, things like this are very valuable as well. Yes, this is a cheap one, but it has lasted me probably eight or nine years. All the tools behind me aren't going anywhere. I will always be able to use them as long as I take care of them and they hold up. Those are stores of wealth and value and they can really help you out in a difficult time. So when most people say they want to retire, that usually means spending some money on the kids at Christmas after you're done working, taking trips and traveling and resting after your lifelong um, job or career, and also saving for potentially deteriorating health issues. Like I talked about last week, we all need to take care of our health better so that those things don't come up. And don't get me wrong, I'm certainly not saying go out and buy 10 tons of pinto beans and try to store them up, or buy 50 tools that you will never ever use because they're just obscure. What I'm saying is store up value in quality items that you need or will need over time. I personally wouldn't keep all of my money in my investment accounts and not have any of what you see behind me because when the time comes and I need these, my investment accounts may not be able to provide that for me. And I want you to look at investing in a homestead the same way, right? So, you know, these apple trees over here that I purchased were probably, I don't know, 40 bucks a pop. And it's beautiful, it's probably 10 feet tall now, and hopefully I'll get some apples out of it next year. You know, all the money that I spent to put in this garden will pay off someday. And things like our greenhouse were a great investment. I paid, like $2,800 for this 20 by 40 greenhouse from Grower Solution a few years ago. And the amount of food that I've gotten out of it has been amazing. And then of course, things like solar, which I'm slowly adding to over time as I get funds, can help you save as well, especially with rising energy costs all over the country. Adding things to your homestead, like a good piece of equipment like this trailer is also important and it's going to be incredibly valuable to you for the work that you will do out here. And that includes things like this old tractor that I bought, which has saved me so much time and back aches here on the homestead, as well as this cement mixer, which I purchased from the previous homeowner for like maybe a hundred bucks, something like that. But I knew I would need it and I knew how valuable it would be. So I know you know what I am saying. Financial products can be good and they can increase in value, but they can also certainly decrease. And things like these have value as well. So what I'm saying is do not put all of your eggs in one basket. Spending more money on having good tools, on having enough tools and having the proper tools is important. Spending money on certain backup items for your family is also very important. So don't put all your money in the bank and expecting it to be there tomorrow if you need to buy some of these. Have a decent, intelligent amount on hand. Don't be a hoarder though. And if you want, you can invest in a couple of these as well. They do a pretty decent job at keeping the mice away. All right, have a beautiful blessed day. And if you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below the video. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you a cool method of how we preserve our food. We'll see you next time.